All right, Sticks is here. Hold on one second. Let me move you over to the screen. Uh, battle tested, I see here with the helmet on. Okay, now let me move you. Let me move you over here, and then change the change the ratio here. How you doing, Sticks? What's up, man? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing very well. Uh, good to talk to you. Good to see you back here on the kill stream. Uh, and we'll just jump right into it. You know what? You don't need any introduction. I see a super chat coming Bones in. Bonesoft Wizkin sent ten dollars on Rumble. Here's twenty dollars for you. Well, thank you, Bones of Wizkin. He said here's twenty, but he sent ten. But I'll take ten as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let me pull you back up. Uh, okay. okay, now let's so just. So I can't. I can't see you over on the uh, Google thing. You should be able to see me now. Can you? Okay, now I can see you. But yeah. I'm actually watching the stream itself over there. Okay. I've got it I've got it over on the side so I can pay attention to chat uh, sporadically as well. Okay, cool. So you you should be able to see me. There was a few tech issues at the start. I don't know what happened there, but uh, I'll figure that out later. Uh and okay. Yeah. So welcome back to the show. It's good to have you here. What about this Baron Trump thing? I'll just I'll just start back uh, right at that because I was just introing that topic right before you jumped in. Uh, and I'll, I'll switch back over. It's, it's Mike Singleton. Uh, and before oh, I, sw I switch to you, he says, Baron Trump turns 18 today. He's fair game now, is what he said. <laughs> now, now, the full picture there has Baron Trump in the frame. The archive didn't capture it all in that particular archive. But you, you know what it reminded me is uh, some of these uh, sick guys are out there like, oh, she turns 18 today. Get on OnlyFans or we can, we can get her now or whatever. Which, I mean, technically, yeah, okay, she, she's 18, but, like, you know, have a little little bit more decorum than that. And, uh, and, if, Baron, <laughs> and, if, and if Baron Trump were female, you know that there would be uh, oh, 10 sure. times the yeah. outrage. Oh, sure, yeah. Or sure. if you were the child of, uh, of a liberal or something like that. Oh, this I don't, so think, this, I don't yeah. think that Sington meant to sound pervy. I think that he yes. was referring to criticism of Baron Trump. Like now that he's an adult, yes. you're allowed to criticize him politically or something like that. I don't, I don't think that it had to do with him literally perving on Baron and Baron could fucking drop him in one hit. So no, I, I completely <laughs> Good luck agree. To him. I can. That yeah. would be funny. I completely. And he's a time traveler. And shit. <laughs> I completely agree with that. I'm just saying it, it kind of gives off that same vibe, though. You know what I mean? Where yeah. It's like okay, this is a little, this is a little weird. Uh, but also uh, imagine if they well, done Sinkton, this. Well, Sinkton's weird, like literally twenty. What do you know about if he, this guy? If he posts, he posts the weirdest stuff pretty much all of the time. He's just an attention whore. Guy, I mean, he's doing it to be edgy normal. because that's, Whatever I guess, his job PPP? now. He used to you do uh, NBC. He used to be one of their, I think, producers something or something like that, scenes? and uh, got shit canned. And so now he's got to, uh, he's got to shit post on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> that's I, his job now. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know much about him. I've seen him on Twitter, but I, I didn't know his whole history. Do we know what he got shit canned for? I don't know. Mm. I mean, I just don't care enough to look into it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. I I never cared enough to look into it too, but he apparently had a pretty high position. Uh, yeah. At, at NBC. People keep mentioning people keep mentioning the Olsen twins. Yeah, wasn't there a dot com at the time that was like tracking like the number of minutes until they turned 18 or something weird like that? Yes, I believe there was. It seems like I've uh, heard of that. Uh, but I mean, I've it's seen like yes, like yes, that. it is now it is now legal to fuck these a child stars. It's like, oh, come on. on Rumble. Sticks right, will now, give you on, 100 signed check. pictures of Penn Jillette and a lightly uses Ron Paul a, 2008 yard sign a, if you finally name them. There's a couple super chats coming in. I'll, I'll, I'll read Galactics first, and this wasn't on our list uh, for uh, because I left it off on purpose, but he sent me a super chat. You can pass on it if you want, but he said, whatever, and I, you probably will, but I'll read it anyway. He says, whatever happened to your beef with PPP? Uh, we call him quadruple P here on the kill stream, but he seemingly attacked you and then just completely stopped. Did did something happen? And was that made good? Or you can weigh in on that. If you who's want to. who's who's PPP? Yeah, I think that's a fair answer, honestly. Uh, <laughs> I, I literally don't know what that refers to. I've had beefs with mainly like like, like with Destiny trying to rope a dope me and failing. And then Vouch just, you know, hitting me out of nowhere to try to do the algorithmic, uh, you know, uh, hijacking thing. But I don't really have beefs with most creators. Well, you know, it's funny because Styx doesn't. He doesn't really get involved with that. Maybe, you know, poking some of these lefties or whatever. But that's why I was shocked. PPP is the gelatinous uh, co-host of Andy Worski. Uh, oh. uh, and so he put Oh, oh yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I know who you're referring to. Um, no, I don't even know what the beef was over. I don't either. Like, I, had, I, I, had, I had, I had never bad mouthed Worski or him or anybody else. And all of a sudden shit's happening. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't exactly know. Well, I, I don't, 
and I know you might take umbrage with this, but I still I still don't have a, a beef with Worski because he never talked shit about me or anything like that. But all of a sudden, this other dude is saying crazy things. And I'm like, what? What's going on here? Yeah, it was strange. I, I, and no, I'm like, you know, did you take too many amphetamines or something like that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't take umbrage. I don't, exp you know, people like, you know, are cool with somebody. They don't have to pick it up just because I don't like them or, or whatever. But, yeah, I thought if you ask my thoughts on it, it seemed just like some clickbait stuff, right, to try to start some stuff uh, with a bigger. Many trainer. such cases. Yeah, many such cases. That's kind of how I took it. But, but Sticks doesn't Too many really such cases. Wait, yeah, but you don't really engage in that sort of thing. Uh, and, you know, like you said. No, I, I, fucking, I fucking hate e-drama and stuff like that like i have no no problem with like a grudge match like in a debate you get like really sure. fiery and stuff and you call each other a fucker like something like that that's perfectly fine but um i mean at the end of the day god uh i'm one dude with a webcam i don't have enough time to to you know look into e-drama at all I, I literally don't care i'm too busy i've got a bunch of okra over there <laughs> that's my <laughs> life goal growing my leeks also I'll, I'll figure out what tab somebody said i'm trying to figure out where the um where the actual TTS is coming from. I'll figure that out uh, here in a second. I, I, Like I said, my tech completely stabbed me in the back right while we were starting the show. Uh, but let me ask and we're, you. And we're not on YouTube, right, so that I can yeah, be you, more frank. and yes, you can, I, can say cont I can say content here and nobody cares. You can say whatever you want here on the kill stream okay, that's fine. Uh, for sure. Uh, now let me ask you about, uh, so we talked about the Baron Trump thing. I, I guess you could talk about that a little bit more, but uh, even when Obama's daughters were – you know, 18, 19, 20, they, they were saying they were off limits. And remember Nikki Haley, her daughter's 27 yeah. or something and married and was a surrogate on her campaign. Yeah. And I actually Vivek called her out. Yeah, go ahead. Just yeah, I actually, I actually had, um, lore, Dixie lore, Spectre sent $5 Lewis, on uh, who I debated I on uh, Lev's before, podcast of Rick's Rules. Or Prince. And, uh, she was like, uh, when I was, you know, talking about how Sington's post was inappropriate. She's like, well, did you uh, defend the Obama daughters? And I'm like, yeah, actually, I did. And I posted a video from like fucking 10 years ago or something. You remember when Malia went to Lollapalooza and yes. there was a picture of her smoking weed? I remember that. And at the time, my reaction is, who cares? She's an adult. She's not an elected official. She's smoking something that's legal there anyway. So I literally don't give a shit. And I called out conservatives at the time, actually, for acting indignant about that. And uh, so I was chuckling about that, but I'm going to extend the same courtesy to non-elected officials. Uh, you know, they're 18, 19 years old or something. Okay, what were you like when you were 19 or something like that? I was doing all sorts of crazy shit. We all do. It's just we live in a different era now where everything is recorded. And so it can become a problem for people that didn't really exist like when we were younger. That's right. Or they would take uh, pictures of the Obama sisters, like smoking a cigarette or something like that. And it's yeah. oh my I, god, what a sin! <laughs> it's like, okay. Nobody's ever done that. <laughs> uh, it's a little crazy. Now, if Barron suddenly dis decided to enter the political fray, now I do <laughs> think you know if you're in the political fray, you're in the political fray, right? I would uh, be very surprised if he did not enter politics. Yeah, I would be too. Uh, but he hasn't as of yet, right? Um, so, I mean, he just he just barely became old enough to hold office as a mayor. So right. Uh, but imagine yeah. Baron Trump, mayor of D.C. How yeah. funny that would be. <laughs> now, what do you think about his prospects? You think he could do something like that? He's very imposing, uh, and in a non creepy way, unlike Mike Sington, he is a handsome individual. Yeah, he could do it. He's got the musculature. He's got the face. He's got the gaze. And uh, I haven't heard much of him speaking, but I imagine that he's probably being trained as a public speaker. Uh, he's probably being trained like Eric Trump was, especially as, as sort of the boardroom uh, figure. And so I would be very, I mean, he could definitely do it if he wanted to. Yeah, in the I, future. I, yeah, I mean, he'll have to get a few years on him, but, you know, and we'll he'll, see. he'll go to I mean, Like you said, shit. we haven't really heard him talk and stuff like that, but I, I would imagine he's been pretty well educated. Uh, oh, yeah. He is very imposing. He's, like, physically imposing. He's like what, he's six, six foot eight. eight. Yeah, he's six <laughs> eight. He looks like an NBA his, power his, his dad. His dad is tall enough. I don't know where the hell he got his height from. I mean, the only thing that could stop him is maybe he has some sort of gigantism or something, but he doesn't. he's not ill-proportioned or anything like that. He's just freakishly tall. Yeah, he's just huge. Uh, all right, now let me ask about the election. If he were, if he were black, he'd be in the NBA. <laughs> yeah, he definitely would be. Uh, now let me ask about the election. How do you see things going? Some of the polls have shown a little bit of a bounce for Biden uh, after the State of the Union. I'm not sure if I'm buying that or not, but uh, Drudge has been hyping that uh, up some others. But what, what, 
what what polls show a bounce because I use R I use RCP. Well, I and in too. that it's uh, basically flat. It's about the same as it was before, more or less. Well, I actually I'm looking at it. Trump's today. Trump's got a Trump's got a what is it? A, he's got a plus three point five in Michigan. He's actually a little bit ahead now in Pennsylvania of all places, which is disastrous for the Biden regime. He's got a above a plus five in Georgia, uh, North Carolina, Arizona, and Nevada, if I remember correctly. Um, I looked at the general election polling and and the most recent state polling. It's only a couple of polls, so it doesn't matter too much. But the state of the union doesn't appear to have given Biden really any bounce at all. Well, and all he should he should have gotten much more of a spike from that if if it were any good. And the legacy media astroturfed it as though it was like really great, like yeah, it's yeah. the greatest thing that we ever saw, and uh, but it never really materialized. Yeah, and I and I, I don't want to overstate it, but I you know, and I see the Trump average still plus two, and I think it was like plus two point three nationally. It, it, yeah, it's, so it it's was like maybe a between little bump between but. between one and three is basically Trump's yeah. advantage. But I mean, consider that in in context of comparing it to twenty twenty when he had a deficit of six points. Oh, yeah, he's in a much better position, and you rightly pointed out, which I was also going to mention, uh, the national polls, you know, they're one or two where they're tied and stuff, but he's still leading in most of those, and he's leading in pretty much every battleground state poll that I've seen, uh, and yeah. by sizable margins. In, the, ag in yeah. the aggregate, he's leading in literally all of the battleground yeah. states. I've, I've written off North Carolina and Georgia as even being battlegrounds unless something absolutely insane happens. I think Trump has, uh, pretty much automatically gets those. I think that if the uh, hinge is going to be Pennsylvania or Wisconsin, it couldn't be worse for Joe Biden. We could see a situation where Trump takes Virginia. He could take Maine. He could potentially even get close in New Hampshire. I mean, well, that's game, set, match. Yeah, and um, I, I don't really see, you know, there's some conspiracy-minded people uh, who watch the show, and even myself, I'm a little conspiracy-minded every once in a while, though not as much as some of them. But we were speculating one day a couple weeks ago, uh, might there be some external event to shake things up uh, as we head, or, head around yeah. the corner here, right? Because yeah, no, Trump is in Ron the Paul. Seat. Yeah, yeah Ron, Ron Paul warned of a black swan event the other day with Tucker Carlson. Yeah. yeah no. That might be their last resort. I mean, if they let's say that they find him guilty of one or more felonies, and they definitely want to before the election, and uh, that does not have the intended effect, and he possibly gains support or it doesn't affect him at all, and I, I think the latter is more likely. I don't think that it'll really change the trajectory. Um, it'll just make people on the left more likely to hate him and people on the right more likely to say he's being persecuted. I love this dude. Uh, well, then, they, they yeah, as a method of last resort, then they might try to kill him. Well, I mean, I mean, some some of these people openly allude to that, like uh, Keith Olbermann and Kathy Griffin and some of these people. They said, well, uh, maybe he'll lose. Maybe he'll get shot. Either way, we'll take care of Trump somehow. Well, that and or, I mean, I would I would think that normally you'd get a visit from the Secret Service. <laughs> well, you think? <laughs> I don't say things like that ever <laughs> because I know that they pick me up even yeah. down here in Mexico. Uh, but it's, it's like that. Uh, it's like that assassination story about George W. The other day, it's like, okay, I'm not going to shed any tears if something happens to him, but I'm definitely not going to encourage it to happen because I know better. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't see. You know, I was going through and writing some notes down based on some stuff you've been talking about recently. I didn't know that story. What was the story behind an assassination? Uh, no, gee, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Uh, apparently, some Iraqi managed to come to the United States after having served with Al Qaeda. Uh, so this is a literal terrorist by U.S. definitions, still managed to resettle in Ohio and then was trying to pay money in order to get a bunch of ISIS members into the country to go scope out George W.'s Texas ranch and then kill him. <laughs> and, and 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 only because the FBI managed to entrap him did did anything happen about this. But I mean, I, my question was, why are you in the country in the first place? It doesn't make any sense. Well, you know, nothing what? about the story made sense. Well, you know, Still what? Doesn't. before I move into the because that leads into the immigration topic that I was going to bring up next. But before I do, what about something? And again, I don't want anything to happen to Joe Biden. But what about something? You know, you mentioned something happening to Trump. But what if? What if the other idea takes place, right? Something happened. Biden. Well, then we're I, I would take a bullet for Joe Biden because then the <laughs> alternative is Kamala Harris. I'd sacrifice myself to save all of you from having Kamala Harris as president. 
Uh, okay, so say that doesn't happen. Is there any chance there's some type of Biden mysteriously? Uh, he's he's he suddenly realizes he's too ill uh, to carry on, and there's some type of convention switch, which could actually it's, happen. Uh, but yeah, I don't think yeah. so. It, it's possible, but it would be unprecedented. And yeah. the problem is for the Democrats strategically. The problem is that if they do that. A lot of people have, have actually cast their votes for Joe Biden, a lot of Dem partisans mainly, and said, well, you know, I may not really, really like him, but I'm casting my vote for him. I would think that you would alienate a, a section of that voting base. Maybe not all of them, but, a, but at least some proportion would be alienated because they cast their votes for somebody other than the nominee, and then they'd be pissed about that. He does have a core fan base. It's not large. It's not particularly powerful or solidified, but it does exist. Yeah, it and, does. Uh, and, and ego, his ego, I don't think is going to let him try to step down. I don't think that's what he wants. I think he wants to run again. Yeah, I do too. Uh, and you know, even though a lot of people didn't want him to, uh, Democratic insiders, etc. But yeah, I think it's his ego. He wants the two terms. Uh, yeah. And also, like you said, technically at the convention, you know, I, people don't understand. Some people do, but these primaries, these uh, caucuses, they can just rewrite the rules anytime they want, right? Uh, and go to the second. Also, they're useless and, at this point. They're, yeah. they're running unopposed. Uh, Trump yeah. doesn't have anyone opposing him. Biden has a token opposition that can't even scrape together like three percent in most states so it doesn't really make a difference now let me ask you this before uh, i move on what were your thoughts on nikki haley's candidacy uh and uh it was retarded <laughs> <laughs> those are my only thoughts on nikki haley's <laughs> candidacy uh she she should have dropped out before super tuesday i think so too and and, and endorsed trump and said, look, you know, while I would love to be the candidate, I realize that that's not going to happen. Instead, she predictably did the, I have a vagina, that's why I'm not the, the nominee thing. And the, well, Trump has to earn my constituents' votes thing. It's like, well, I mean, he already did, by and large. He completely trounced you, and, you know, she never fully understood that, I think. So she is sour grapes. And even Ron DeSantis calling her out. And I told people a long time ago, give Ron DeSantis a break. He made a lot of mistakes. He didn't run a great campaign, but it was way better than Nikki Haley's. <laughs> well, that's true. And he had the grace to drop out. Yeah, and her whole girl power thing uh, yeah. was just, I don't we know what need women thinking. in charge. It takes a woman to do a man's job. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Right, and she's doing it from you the right. You sound like a Democrat. That's what I'm saying. She's doing that from the right, and all these people who say, oh, her national prospects are still alive for 2028, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> no, right? like, she's uh, not, she can run if she wants to. Uh, Ron DeSantis and Youngkin will get back in there, and they'll completely ass blast her, and then she'll be reduced to talking about her boobs again. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's going to work. Particularly her memory how she, glands. How she showed her ass there at the end of the campaign. I, I don't think that that's going to work. And she's definitely not going to be in the ministry. If Trump puts her in the administration, I'll just lose my mind. Surely he won't do that now. Though. Zero zero percent yeah. chance that she's anywhere near him. They've yeah. burned that bridge. I think so too. Uh, now Desantis. Desantis. Vague possibility. Although I don't think that he would accept it. With Nikki Haley, no, no, not even close. Yeah, I, I would say DeSantis maybe, but there's still a lot of bad blood there. But he's kept his head – he's not as bad as Haley, at least, uh, with some of the stuff that well, she said, et cetera. Hell, I mean, it, it, here's here's the thing. Uh, Mike Pence versus Nikki Haley. Gun to your head, one of them has to be the president of the United States. Oh, Which one dude, do you that's choose? that's tough, man, because they're like the same person almost, except – You're like, know. just pull the trigger. Yeah. Exactly. I, and it's funny you mentioned Mike Pence because I was even going to skip over that. He said he wasn't going to endorse Trump, and I'm sitting there thinking, wow, what a loss for Trump's campaign. Uh, I mean, He I guess, lost 10 voters and yeah. gained 20 extra. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I guess it gives the Dems the talking point that, oh, your own vice president won't back you or whatever, yeah. but Pence sucks, and everybody hates him on the right anyway. So. Well, so does the left. I mean, they think yeah. that he's the devil junior because he was the VP under Trump, so it yeah. doesn't make any difference. I don't see that making a difference. Gun to my head between him and Haley. I mean, they're both neocon losers, though. Like, I, 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 I don't they're know. They're just like, go ahead and shoot me. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Show I, me some mercy. I don't really know. Yeah, don't let me live through this. I I, I don't know that that would make too much of a difference uh, between the two, <laughs> honestly. And I guess chat could weigh in on that, too. But I, I don't really see a difference being made there. Now, let me. Mostly up. people saying that uh, fuck Pence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, because he does suck pretty bad, I have to say. I guess vagina wins the day. It's Nikki Haley for president. <laughs> 
Are they really picking Haley in the chat? I mean, Pence, though. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Texas immigration law. So for those who don't know, uh, Texas passed a law uh, basically allows their police to enforce the border uh, and arrest people. Um, you know, they're illegally and kind of do their own uh, deportation thing, which traditionally has been the purview of the federal government, but they're not doing their job. So Texas passed this law um, and the Supreme Court ruled yesterday, I believe, that it could go. Well, they issued they didn't stay the law. Right. So they said it could go ahead. It's, it's, without... it's real goddamn confusing. Because yes. First, first, they stayed it and they said, yes. OK, this this is not allowed where we're considering it. Then they issued a ruling the next day. Okay, it's perfectly fine, you know, pending further litigation at the lower level. They bounce it back to the lower level. Then at the lower level, yes. they reinstate the ban. That's right. And now they're considering it, but on an expedited schedule, courtesy of Amy Coney Barrett. I have no idea how this one is going to play out because I, and I'm amenable to both sides. It doesn't make sense for foreign nations to have to uh, deal diplomatically with 50 different states as opposed to a singular entity. Because the federal government is tasked with guarding those borders, and and they, I mean, the the Biden administration fundamentally is correct when they say, well, it's our purview to take care of immigration matters. But the thing is, they're not actually doing their job. They're ignoring the will of Congress via multiple bills with regards to immigration. And so you're between a cock and a hard place. You're either <laughs> saying that foreign countries are going to have to deal with different states for the purposes of, of migration and things like that, even, even even legal immigration potentially, you're giving the states that power under, I guess, the 10th or something. That'll be a mess. Um, and, and then those individuals, imagine, you, you can imagine a time, I mean, five years from now, let's say they, they decide that way. Somebody has been accepted by the state of California as a legitimate asylum seeker or something. They've been given their driver's license and so forth and they're living there. But then they decide they wanna go to Texas but then the state of Texas says, no, you're not allowed to be here. Under our particular laws, you're not allowed to be here. That would be a, a big fucking conundrum and lead to future uh, federal and Supreme Court decisions. Likewise, um, if you don't side with the state of Texas, you're effectively saying the federal government is at latitude to not enforce existing federal law with regards to immigration, and there's nothing that the states can actually do about it. Texas will therefore simply be perpetually busing illegals and and asylum seekers to other states because they can that that they're legally allowed to do and uh you know spending a shit ton of money doing so in the process and making cities like chicago and new york uh, unlivable in the process yes. so there's there's really the, the problem is there's really no legal solution now that the can of worms has been opened really the only solution is to get sane federal government back in there that'll guard the border yeah, it's kind of a constitutional conundrum, uh, and really the federal government is supposed to be the one. I mean, <laughs> that's actually how it's supposed to work. Like you said, uh, the individual states, federal government is supposed to have control over immigration uh, and the border. Like that's one of the whole yeah. reasons you have a fucking federal government yeah. in the first place. The, the big problem uh, but, is though you've got the, you've got pre existing federal law that has already been passed, and they're not really right. They're not really abiding by it, and so. If the federal government is negligent in doing so, and, and this is how I, the only way out is that they rule the federal government needs to abide by current immigration law and make an attempt to actually enforce the border, et cetera. Otherwise, the states are allowed to topically enforce it. That's pretty much the only way out. But I mean, they may not have the intelligence to do so. Well, and Texas, I mean, this is, that's what it's well, they don't, obviously, <laughs> under the Biden administration, but. Uh, Texas, so one of the things, I live in Mexico, in the Yucatan here, uh, in Merida. Now, it's far away from the border, but I still live in Mexico. So you're, da you're, down, you're down near the Mayan ruins and stuff yes, like that? Yes, I've been to Chechen Itza and the uh, Pyramid of the Magician uh, and a couple other places around here. But uh, Chechen I, I, bet the, I bet the food is, is amazing. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's excellent down here. And Chechen Itza, one of the wonders of the world. Uh, it doesn't do it justice just to see a picture of it. When you walk up on it, uh, it is quite incredible. Uh, and yeah, I've been there and it's pretty amazing. But uh, the Mexican government, so Texas said they were going to take all illegal immigrants and just dump them like at the port of entries to Mexico. 
whether they were Mexican or not. Uh, and so Mexico's like, fuck no, we're not going to take any of those people. Uh, any, they said any migrants. Now, um, I, I don't know if that includes Mexicans or not, but uh, again, maybe because it's a state instead of the federal government, they said they weren't, they weren't even going to deal with that. Yes, they're, um, they're, not, they're not going to engage in diplomacy with a singular state um, because that would countermand the federal supremacy under diplomacy. And that actually, I, I have to agree with Mexico on that one. Um, not, not as far as not taking anyone back in that's been evicted or something like that, but uh, diplomatically speaking, there has to be one singular entity for them to actually, you know, conduct diplomacy with. Yeah, and that, that and doesn't... So, and again, again, that's the, that's the second layer of the sticking point of this issue is uh, there's, there's only a limited way out of this problem. And it starts with actually having a border control system, actually guarding the border. But the Biden administration is unwilling and incapable of doing so. As long as that remains, uh, basically, I'm hoping that this gets delayed and punted, and the Texas uh, Texas ability to you know evict people uh, remains in sway is upheld, you know, partially until the next election. Then Trump is reelected because then it won't be a problem anymore. I agree with that. Um, but I, I'll say, you know, part of me is like, well, they have to take back Mexican citizens. Uh, but I can see why they wouldn't take back, you know, Guatemalans, Hondurans. But they did let them come through no. <laughs> Mexico in the first place. So, yeah, I know. Uh, well, the know. other problem is that <laughs> for Venezuelan citizens, when they leave their country at the border, typically they get their passports taken away. Their paperwork is taken from them. And so any Johnny come lightly without papers can say, well, senor, I am Venezuelan and they can come through. Well, they might not be Venezuelan. They might be a Mexican and still come across and there's no way to actually ship them back. And so the the, the Venezuelan excuse has become a real big problem, too. I mean, uh, Venezuela has gone crazy and they know what they're doing. They're taking advantage of the Biden administration. That's also why they're eyeing Guyana right now to get their oil reserves. They know that Biden's not Biden's not going to do jack shit about it. What's he going to do? He's going to send a couple of advisors over there to arm ten Guianans with muskets or something like that. Yeah, and for That'd people, be a military response. People who don't know, there's plenty of Venezuelans here in Mexico, uh, and Cubans and Guatemalans and uh, you know people from all over South America because Mexico is actually. Um, you know, it has its own diverse. problems, but it's better than Venezuela. <laughs> uh, They've and, got diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yes, and Cuba, I'll talk about that later. Cuba's on the brink. I actually went to visit Cuba uh, about a year and a half ago now. Uh, oh, you've been to Cuba? Yeah, I've been to Cuba. I was in Havana and Veradero uh, there in Cuba. Did you get harassed by any commies there, or are no. they more tolerant? Not at all. Uh, they're very – well, I'll say you get harassed by people trying to, like – sell you something or you know because they're really poor there in cuba and tours touristas uh they know have uh, more money than they do most of them anyway and so they try to sell you bootleg cigars or sell you this or sell you that so you might get uh accosted like that but uh no it's pr it's really safe in cuba it was then it's breaking down a little bit now uh because they had military police everywhere uh and They'll throw yeah. somebody in the gulag uh, <laughs> in Cuba. But, no, I, I didn't get harassed. It was, it was very beautiful, but uh, very, very poor. Um, I heard I heard the seafood is delicious there. It is. Uh, yeah. And Ver Veradero Beach is one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Uh, and Havana itself is really beautiful, although it's kind of dilapidated. So the architecture is, is very beautiful in the Malacan there. Um, you know, across the Caribbean, it's, it's beautiful to go there and get your picture taken. You see all these old forts and stuff, but, um, they're, they, they were in a dire place even in late 2022. And now the whole country, uh, is on the brink. If you, if you've been following that a little bit in the news. Yeah. But, yeah. No, I saw that they had protests due to a, uh, what was it? Food shortages, I think. Yeah, they, they have food shortages, and there's, you know, speculation that that's because uh, the bigwigs basically keep all the food. There really shouldn't be the food shortages like you see, uh, but there are, uh, and there's electricity electricity shortages too, uh, so yep. they, they've been protesting over that. Uh, Not so, the greatest place for a streamer, you know. No, you can't you'll, stream there. You'll have to wait a few more years before you can go back. Now, you know what? I said that, and it's it's really cheap to live in Cuba, but 
you can't do any streaming there because the internet completely sucks. And, <laughs> you know, even the, the, the Wi-Fi spots that they do have and some of the residences, residences have Wi-Fi, but it's super fucking slow. And you can't, uh, you so can't. So it's like operate. hotel Wi-Fi, yeah. Yeah, it's really bad. Uh, and the dial-up, <laughs> yeah, and it's three G most of the country. If you get a SIM card when you go in there, and I could barely even pull up Twitter uh, every once in a while. And as far as, far as posting stuff, um, that was pretty much enough. And then you got to be careful because if you post the wrong thing, you know, uh, the uh, Gestapo might get you. Yeah, they they monitor that sort of thing. Now, I've been anti-Cuban embargo and stuff like that. I wouldn't say necessarily pro-Cuba, but I, I'm anti-U.S. policy towards Cuba. Um, Same, that way. yeah. Yeah, I think the embargo is ridiculous. But that was one of the few things that Obama did that actually made yes, sense. I agree. Trying to normalize relations. I agree with that a hundred percent. And one of the reasons I went to Cuba is because I, you know, I always wanted to go. And once I moved to Mexico, you can just fly straight there, no problems. Uh, and you can technically from the U.S., but it raises a lot of eyebrows. And <laughs> uh, and as a US I don't think citizen, there are a lot of I don't think there are many flights to Cuba. No, they're not. They're not. Uh, and once a day. Yeah, and technically, when you go to Cuba, if you're a U.S. citizen, you're not supposed to spend at like military owned operations which happens to be a lot of the economy uh is owned by the military they own a lot of hotels a lot of these cigar places they own of course i would never have spent at any of those places of course but uh uh you never bought a havana cigar uh now i, I did but only from uh, u.s approved sources of course uh, i would never i would never step outside <laughs> of that outside of that line um all right so we talked about uh we talked about immigration let's talk about twitter uh, and Elon Musk, uh, how do you think Twitter's been since he's taken over? Do you think it's improved? It's improved, um, although not completely. It's uh, but it's better than it was before. It's not exactly on new tech levels like you know Rumble or BitChute or something, but at the same time, it's less censored than before, and any marginal improvement is a good thing. And I would note, I mean, uh, if, if Elon Musk were just being disingenuous, so just giving a few trinkets away to free speech or something, then you wouldn't have the cavalcade of legacy media articles declaring him extremist. I, I talked about that in one of my exclusives today. There was an article that was talking about him being a conspiracy theorist uh, because he believes in, uh, in you know, new tech, in, in, in old tech censorship and uh, the spin of the legacy media and opposes DEI. And I was thinking to myself, most of what he's saying there is fundamentally objectively correct. I agree. Like with not that. just not just objectively, but but we can observe it uh, for ourselves. Yeah, no, but we're I, being gaslit, you know. And I and I think you're you're right. That's my take too. It's improved, but you know, not a whole hog, uh, so to speak. But it's even just the the small. I won't say small. Uh, mar marginal, medium improvements uh, that we've seen is too much for people like Don Lemon. Uh, if you if you yeah. saw his interview with Elon. Musk. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was brought up in the article I was citing earlier. Well, Musk berated Don Lemon. Oh, poor man. Yeah. Well, he he needs to be berated. Uh, and also, <laughs> I did watched... you see? Did you see the list of demands that Don Lemon had apparently for Twitter? To, to, to go forth with his ex exclusivity deal? No, I didn't actually. He wanted, I think it was, a, he wanted a Tesla Cybertruck. He wanted something like $10 really? million. Dollars. Yeah, he wanted like $10 million up front. He wanted to be the first broadcaster from space. I'm not kidding you. I, I imagine you can look, look up the fucking article. Look up, I, here, I'll, I'll try to get it to you. I'll try to link this to you. Okay. It was, in, it was literally insane. Uh, the Don Lemon Twitter demands. I couldn't believe I thought it was a joke at first. What's well, yeah, his like agent? Is, his, his agent is denying it. Trip to space allegedly among Lemon's demands in ex contact. <laughs> he literally wanted to go into space and do a broadcast from a goddamn space rocket. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, yeah, um, oh, the list gets crazier and crazier. Oh, it was great. Uh, yeah, he uh, wanted a $5 million advance on top of an $8 million base salary. So, $8 million bucks a year just to make a Twitter show. Equity in the company. What he wanted, see, he he wanted some control over the uh, news feeds on Twitter. Like he wanted to literally be sort of like a consultant uh, for what would or would not be allowed as far as Twitter partnerships, at least for up to a year uh, after signing on. And then he wanted the Cybertruck, and uh, Musk told him no, and so uh, then stabbed him in the back. Oh, I couldn't believe it when I first read the reports. I was like, okay, I can understand. Like, okay, you want you want a Cybertruck or something and, you know, a couple million because, you know, you're Don Lemon. 
and you know you are relatively well known you were on cnn and stuff that's reasonable you know you've you've got that lifestyle you know you need to fund it but when i looked at the uh god <laughs> i've never seen such a list of demands <laughs> That's insane to me. First off, yeah, he's Don Lemon. <clears throat> yeah, we know so who he is, but he's not, you know, Walter Cronkite. Like, uh, <laughs> so apparently if somebody like us decided to do a show on Twitter, we would at least be able to demand a half a million <laughs> and one of the lesser Tesla vehicles. Yeah, Tesla 3 or something. Yeah, I, I, I don't know uh, that Don Lemon would ever be worth that sort of... <laughs> That sort of consideration. He's, 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 I think he might be the most entitled person that I've ever heard of. If, I mean, if these allegations, his agent, his agent is denying the upfront five million, but they're not denying any of the other things. They are not denying that Don Lemon literally wanted to get launched into space on a starship and broadcast from orbit. Also, that's been done. <laughs> I've seen imagine? broadcast from orbit. So, like, <laughs> Well, yeah, videos, yes, but he wanted to do oh, a live podcast show. from okay. orbit. Yeah. Yes, he wanted to, he wanted to be the world's first person to do a live show from orbit. I'm thinking, shouldn't that be reserved for somebody who's actually entertaining? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Let's uh, let, we can we can sign up. We'll we'll do the live yeah, stream. Yeah, maybe from we orbit. can do it. And also, you know, I saw uh, I didn't see the whole interview with Moz, but we watched like the uh, six minute clip where he's trying to berate him into oh stepping up moderation, right? And are you okay with this? And he shows the merchant meme and some other stuff, and he's you know trying to ambush <laughs> him. And Elon's like, well, hey, it's not against the law, you know. Uh, Elon's uh, like, hey, you know, uh, I'm a white South African, so if I talk about the Great Replacement theory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm coming from. Might know a little bit about it, but I have, I have, I've seen it happen. <laughs> but he also said, so Elon gives him his answer. He's like, well, it's not against the law, da da da. And then, then Don Lemon goes, well, what about child porn? And <laughs> that was his retort to this. And Elon and goes, like, okay, well, that's, that's generally against. The law. against yeah, unless you're in Papua New Guinea or something, you know. Yeah, he's like, and well, then that's you don't have internet law. access, so it's not a problem. It was just insane. Don Lemon is not that smart. Uh, I, I I watched I, I watched part of it. I, I couldn't stomach the whole thing, in all honesty. Dude. It was just so goddamn boring. Elon Musk is right. It was like a CNN episode, but geared towards an online audience. So how is that any different from like what Vox does or something like that? Yeah, it wasn't There's no difference. innovative uh, in any way. And he was just and he had shit. And just think, he could have he could have he probably would have gotten the deal. He could have cleaned up. If he had decided to be unique and more edgy or something like that and depart from the old format that he's more used to, he probably could have made his pitch work and he probably would have sealed that deal. Maybe minus the uh, ability to influence Twitter or something like that, but he probably he would have gotten his, you know, eight million a year or something like that because it would have been interesting. And some of us, I, and, and I talked about this, uh, this was months ago when uh, Don Lemon was canned from CNN, I'm like, he has a golden opportunity right now to throw away the legacy media thing, totally throw them under the bus, become a maverick, and really, you know, if, if he ideologically he wants to, he could redeem himself, but he chose not to. And so he's lost out on he's lost out on more money than he can possibly fathom. He chose not to, and he was back on CNN groveling uh, about this yeah. too, which was the, <laughs> which was almost the saddest part. He like, once said mean things. Yeah, so he was literally back on CNN, hat in hand. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I, I somebody that. said, so, uh, Ralph, Ralph Akun, uh, should have done it and shot him into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea. Yeah. I think there would have been some, uh, excitement about sending him in, yeah. into space. If not just for the simple reason that p people would be hoping the rocket, like, uh, you know, blew up <laughs> in orbit, right. Or something like that. Uh, we would be watching it just to see, just in case, uh, there was a don't challenge. Blow up, no, no, don't blow up the rocket, put Hal on board <laughs> and then put him in orbit for like 72 hours and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that that might. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't worked. do. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't do that, Don. <laughs> now, now we we talked about Twitter. What about uh, alt tech spaces in general? We're here on Rumble. Uh, I like Rumble uh, a lot. Now there's some technical issues here or there, uh, but uh, Rumble pretty much lets me do whatever I want. We're rebroadcasting on Kick, although Rumble's our main uh, home base here. Uh, what do you think about the state of alt tech? And I ask you this for uh, for one reason because yeah. uh, you were one of the early guys to to get on all these alt tech sites and really promote them yeah. uh, using your YouTube and drive people to some of these sites way before uh, a lot of people were doing that. Most yeah. everybody. I was I was new tech before new tech was new tech. I can remember back in the days. I don't know if you remember VidMe. Yes, I do. Yeah. 
Yeah, I uh, became one of the largest creators on there, and that was long before I had uh, a large established audience. And uh, they decided to cuck and say that uh, political content couldn't be trending and they wouldn't have news content over on the side tab, and so they sort of fucked themselves. I think they got in over their heads, though, because they never... Um, they never had any real investors or anything. They had an original one million dollar investment, I think, from Reddit, and uh, and it was basically a similar format. And then they sort of they just shit the bed. Uh, but I was happy about that at the time. I just wish that I had a Vidme award or something. But uh, there are big things ahead with Bitshoot. Uh, Rumble has definitely taken off. Substack angered the uh, legacy media. They've stabilized. They're still growing. Uh, Gab you know it remains you know torba you know think what you will about him he's managed to make a profitable site and uh they tried to stop him at all possible turns they they, they t tried to take the site down like three or four different times and they failed completely i think that new tech is going up and up i'm very bullish on new tech uh as am i and you mentioned bet shoot they just started streaming and i didn't get the stream set yep. up on there today but i did the other day uh yeah i'm still trying to figure out uh yeah uh, one one bit. thing they they bootstrapped um uh, the streaming system onto the old design of the site yeah, uh, i believe i believe that they will inevitably improve the site and make it a little bit better so that it doesn't like automatically start when you you actually put in the streaming key. Yes, I saw I, yeah. I brought that up. I actually brought that up to the CEO the other day. Yeah, because the but, way it uh, starts, if you don't start within like 30 seconds, it fucks up and like I I don't know, it needs to yeah. be stationary for a minute cuz usually I set up my streams earlier. Yeah. And, there and are, there are there are limitations to the current site design, but I did bring that up and uh, there there will be enormous news about BitShoot in the coming months. Very cool. And I, I've been talking to them a little bit too and they got this patient yeah. thing as well and I have it set up, but yeah. it's a little bit uh, it's not quite there yet, but I, I, lo I like the way they're moving. Yeah. They're moving differently, uh, to use a yeah. term there, uh, and, I, and I like seeing it. And I hope that continues. The more, the merrier, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah. Streaming sites. Go yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I want to be able to stream to at least three sites at once and post my videos as widely as possible because, I mean, that's the, that's the nature of the game of a content creator. As many people that can see the content as possible, as many search abilities as possible, it just makes sense. Even if Google and Bing and these other search engines try to deliberately block these sites, which they do. That's right. And Twitter uh, streaming, I've noticed, has gotten a little bit more traction recently, too. And we're streaming mm -hmm. on Twitter uh, today as well. So um, I know you've been doing that, too. Uh, oh, yeah. Now, their video player is not quite there. And there's no live chat, just like BitChute. There's some things they, they need to add. But um, I've been using that. I've been using that, too. Uh, yeah. Right. The, so, development, the developments are there, which is, yes. the, which is the good news. Yeah. I agree. Uh, all right. Now, uh, continuing a little bit in this vein, uh, TikTok. Uh, do you think it should be banned? I, I don't. Uh, no. And, and I'll tell you, okay, well, we agree. Uh, but I'll tell you why I think this has all happened all of a sudden, uh, and it's because of the uh, conflict in Gaza uh, between yeah. Israel and, and Gaza. And, you know, there was all kinds of, you know, anti-white, pro-BLM stuff on there for years, and nobody said anything. And then as soon as the Gaza thing happened, uh, you know, there's a lot of support for Palestinians and a lot of, you know, I guess anti-Israeli content, right? Uh, or countering yeah. some of their narratives. And now all of a sudden, uh, you know, it's it's a completely anti-Semitic place. Yeah, now it's important. Now we have to shut it down. Now we have to sell it to the Saudis or whoever the hell wants to buy it. Here's 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 what I would say about TikTok. I do. I would never use the platform. Um, I realize that it's run by the Chinese Communist Party. And so I'm not interested in having that on any device that I use, giving them my data in any way. But the TikTok ban bill does not simply ban TikTok. Right. Even if I thought that that was a good idea and that the government should have that power, and I don't, it still would be a bad idea. When you look at the other ramifications, you're effectively giving the president of the United States unilateral authority to deem any site that has foreign holdings of any kind. It doesn't even need to be a fully foreign site. Like TikTok, technically speaking, is partially a U.S. subsidiary of a Chinese site. So it's not it not fully based in China. It's a U.S. version of, of a site that's run by a parent company that's based partially in China. You're giving Joe Biden, or hey, liberals out there, by the way, fucking Donald Trump, the right to declare any of those sites adversarial at all and unilaterally block them for sale in app stores or to be platformed in any way including potentially by US VPNs. If you read the bill, it's very vacuous. That's the other part. It's easily up to interpretation. 
Are you going to start prosecuting uh, VPN companies for providing service to this entity because they happen to be based in the United States and they're giving people access and that's literally part of the bill? I mean, you could end up with, you could rip, you could rip the v, uh, VPN sites apart. You could destroy a bunch of social media sites uh, and subsidiaries as well, by the way. And uh, there's nothing that we could do about it. The, the bill is a monstrosity. It's basically the Digital Patriot Act. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah, uh, it's a pig and a poke. Yes, and it's written in it's a like, way that they could target uh, a number exactly. of different sites, not just TikTok. Uh, even they X. could target Twitter. They could target Twitter yes. that way. Yes. Any e even a U.S. firm, if it operates in foreign uh, countries and it has a field office or a headquarters or anything like that, theoretically, under the, the, the and this is the problem with the U.S. bureaucracy, and they've done it before. You could stretch the meaning of that bill and subjugate it to a bureau like um, like the FCC or something like that. And you go after that company and say, well, basically you're a foreign firm because you have a foreign branch. They've done things like that before. It is a pig in a poke law. I don't like TikTok. I'm not going to use TikTok. I have no interest in it. But the TikTok ban bill needs to die. And unfortunately, the cucks in Congress will probably pass it and then Biden well, will sign it. I, I would I notice it, 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 Trump is it, Trump and AOC both coming out against it. I mean, what more proof do you need that it's a bad idea when I, it unites the furthest left and the populistic right? I couldn't agree more. And unfortunately, it looks like it will get through. Uh, it might take a minute in the Senate, but I, I think it does have majority support in the Senate, even though there are some like high profile. I hope I hope I hope Rand filibusters it because he's come That's out right. against it. Uh, yeah, he has. Rand, Rand Paul might be the last hope for a free and open Internet. That's true. Uh, Ron Wyden uh, has come out against a couple others, but I don't know if they'll be able to hold the line or not. Uh, but uh, okay, I hope, so. I hope so. But let me ask you about Israel, uh, Palestine, uh, and the conflict in Gaza. Uh, what yeah. are your What are your thoughts there? Uh, spoiler alert: I'm pro uh, Palestinian, although I don't co-sign, you know, Hamas and you know atrocities, yeah. et cetera. But I I think Israel's committed uh, a number of atrocities uh, since then that's more than made up for it. Yeah. But uh, y your thoughts on the whole thing, if you have any. I'm America first. And so I, while I understand that there have been atrocities on both sides, uh, we've got so many problems stateside right now and in our own inner circle, like in our own hemisphere, that it's difficult for me. I mean, I, I care about the, the looming famine in Gaza, obviously. And I certainly care about the plight of people that have been kidnapped by both Hamas and the IDF. But I find it difficult to really fully commit myself to the situation when there's so much shit happening here. I think that's also then the, the one the one major criticism I have of uh, maybe the Palestinians is that retard the other day from Gaza, that so-called activist that was complaining about U.S. MREs, and he got one that. of the best menus. I saw that he actually had one of the better MREs. Yeah. <laughs> if he had gotten the if he had gotten the white chicken menu five, then I would have said, okay, you've got a legitimate grievance. This is a war crime. <laughs> now, see, I'll never stop about joking MREs. about that. Yeah. I will literally never stop joking about that. For anyone out there, never get menu five. Don't eat it. Don't even fucking open it. Throw it in the fire. <laughs> yeah, I did see uh, some of them complaining about the MREs. Of course, one of those crates fell on like five people and killed them as well, which of course, <laughs> is not the best. I'm bombing best. America. Yeah, no, it's like, okay, here's this aid. Yeah, let's do this aid delivery. The parachute fails to deploy and it kills five Palestinians. That's not the type of... <laughs> PR that you want, but uh, that did happen. I didn't. I didn't see that story, but with yes. Biden's logistics, I can imagine yes. it. Yes, that did happen. Uh, imagine so a big ass crate of uh, a big ass pallet of MREs hits a building that's been bombed and it just collapses the building on twenty people or something. Knocks the whole thing down. Yeah, and I'm not. I wouldn't I, be surprised. Yeah, and the whole port thing. I don't even know if that's going to happen. Uh, I like I said. I'm, I thought they already opened it as, as yeah. like a makeshift uh, recipient spot. Yeah, maybe. I I'm not Pyman sure. Pyman says three dollars. Nah, chat. man, vegetable crumble is the worst one. Uh, Pyman says, "Nah, man, vegetable crumble is the worst one." Is what he said with his super chat. No fucking bull ass shit. Vegetable crumbles are good. The best one was vegetarian lasagna, and they discontinued it about five years ago. Now, how do you know so but much they, about MREs? Because I love them. I've got more MREs coming from a couple of subscribers now, along with some Canadian IMPs, actually. I've still got several in the crate in the room. Now, how I've been do doing that for years. Um, I had an MRE from the Vietnam War era once, and the coffee and the cocoa were actually really, really good. 
Really? The pound still. cake. The, the no. pound cake looked like it would be good, but it smelled like a mushroom, and the entree was bloated. But you can still actually get some edible components from MREs that are fifty years old. That's insane. Yeah, uh, MRE. They're imp- they, they, they are impressive, and the pizza that they designed actually is pretty good. Not gonna lie. I might have to try those out. Of course, there's a lot of good food uh, here in Mexico. But uh, all right, now let me ask you about a couple other things. We don't, we're only going to keep you for an hour, but uh, I wanted yeah. to hit a couple of these topics, though. The, and, you know, I didn't see this video. I just saw you tweeting about it, and I feel like I have to see the video, but I might have to get a New York Times subscription, which I'm not. Uh, but maybe somebody has it somewhere. But there was a, there was a video. The New York Times editorial board put out a video and said the deep state is actually kind of awesome. Uh, Covered that this morning. Yes. so That's very interesting because 24 hours before, they had a separate article saying the deep state doesn't exist. Well, fucking which is it? I'm confused. It sounds like the New York Times editorial board. But did you see the video? And if you did, what was in it? Uh, Or did you just see the headline? I, I did see the video, and it was basically about, well, well, the deep state is basically a conglomerate of uh, disaffected bureaucrats that Donald Trump tried to abuse, and so it's natural that they would try to cock block him. I mean, that's the gist of it. The bureaucracy is good because orange man bad. It's That's literally the take. Of course, I mean, it's the New York Times. Yeah. They've been in with the deep state uh, forever. So I mean, Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, it was an opinion piece, but, I mean, when you also have a separate piece... 24 hours before saying the deep state doesn't exist and Donald Trump's just fucking crazy, you know? It's a little discordant. Uh, yeah. And then I saw this uh, on your Twitter today, and we may go through this. Uh, so Jacobin uh, is, a, is a media outlet, yes. commentary outlet, uh, and they... I wouldn't call it commentary. I would call it blathering, but yeah, I would, commie blathering. I'd call it bullshit. Now let me let me pull this up because, uh, and I'll just read the, the tweet. Uh, it says, I guess this was last night, not this morning. Oh, it, it was says, great. It says, mass layoffs are tearing through U.S. media to preserve a functioning media ecosystem. We need three things. Immediate aid to struggling journalists, public subsidies to smaller news outlets. Now, this is the craziest part, by the way. And eventually, industry transformation into a publicly funded system. <laughs> so, state media. Yes, just flat but out. They're not going to use state it, media. But they're not going to they're not going to use that terminology because they know that people wouldn't receive it as well. That's no, right. no, 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 no. We ju- we just want we just want to make sure that uh, the media is intact. Well, yeah, I mean they're dying for a reason because nobody wants to watch them. They're fucking boring. They're not allowed to say cunt uh, like we are. <laughs> they're not independent, and their overhead is way higher. Can you imagine the cost of subsidizing like the CNN newsroom? To the public, and well, like Fox and M- and and I mean, they'd be better off giving the money to us and publicly funding us. Okay, webcam, microphone, there's a laptop. Here's a little office space. You know, <laughs> that's the way they should do it. I Get agree a couple with that. thousand, a couple thousand content creators, and then a couple thousand citizen journos at the regional level with some, uh, you know, local attaches. It would cost maybe a fifth. Maybe. Uh, and the and whole by thing the way, is... and by the way, Jacobin is completely delusional if they think that they would be one of the media outlets that was chosen for those subsidies. <laughs> That's right. They wouldn't be, but it seemed like they were writing it for themselves too. Uh, yeah. And they're right. Please give us these, money. These fuckers are getting fired and going out of business, but there's a reason for that. It's because they suck. Good. Uh, and Good people, riddance. People hate them. Right? Like, I mean, uh, you know. I'm I, cel- I've I celebrate every single day whenever I see. Uh, uh, news that some missing link media or uh, legacy media site has uh, cut workers. I do too. I remember when people were getting banned for saying "learn to code" because it was bullying. <laughs> you remember that? I do remember that. Now you can say that. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, also, on Twitter anyway. JJT MTL, just chill out and chat, dude. We we saw your shit. Will you just stop before I have to ban you? Jesus Christ. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, he's talking about the Jews. Yeah, well, it's fine. Obviously, I don't stop people talking about uh, Zionist power. That'd be the last thing I do. But like, you're just spamming the chat at a certain point. Like, just chill out. Yeah, the imperialistic uh, element of Zionism is evil. But I mean, some people literally don't have any other topics to talk about. So, 
Yeah, and look, I talk about the topic, but I'm just saying, we, we see your point, sir. Will you just calm down? And I, I don't think you're right on we're, what you're saying. We're, either, but like... we're, we're aware of the potential issue. <laughs> yeah. We have been on the internet for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I heard one or two things about it. I've talked about it uh, one or two times, but uh, just, can you just chill out? Uh, let me run We've through... We've used some... 4chan. <laughs> can, we, can we run through some of these just really quick? Trump-Biden yeah. debate, do you think that's going to happen? Oh, I hope so. Oh, it'd be the greatest thing ever. I would definitely be doing a live stream for those. But I don't know because, uh, I mean, Biden's been openly warned not to debate Donald Trump. They're using the usual excuse, well, you shouldn't justify Donald because he's illegitimate and he's crazy. But it's really about, well, they want to hide Joe Biden from the public because you know that he's going to say crazy shit. Yeah, and he'll melt down during one of these debates. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think also, well, I before, too. if I was him, the only thing, and, and I, I don't think he's going to debate, to be clear, but um, the only thing I would say was, well, Trump didn't debate his primary opponents. But neither did Joe Biden, though, either. So, like, I, I don't even know about that argument. That um, would be but, their front page news. Trump Trump does not debate Biden, even though it'll be Trump <laughs> openly challenging him to a debate and him refusing. That's right. All right, RFK, thoughts on his candidacy? Uh, Irrelevant. Yeah, I think so too. Now they, <laughs> he might get the Libertarian Party nomination. They say to get him on more ballots nationwide. Do you think it could have an impact on the election? And if it um, did, how who would it help or hurt? I don't know that that's likely to happen. If it did, it doesn't help or hurt anyone. It doesn't really seem to have an impact on the on the polling. Even when he's included, Trump leads uh, in these polls. Yeah. So actually, um, with the third party, it's Trump leads slightly more. Yes. Yeah, that's true. So. That's true. Uh, and third party typically hurts the incumbent more anyway, uh, mm -hmm. if you look at your political history. Uh, do you think they're going to seize Trump's properties, unable to meet the $456 million or whatever the fuck uh, number it is, bond, uh, and they, they're making moves that they might do that? They'll try, but Trump will attempt to legally block them, and it could be bogged down for months. Now, let's see. I think I hit most of my questions, but I saw you tweeting about – uh, and I have one super chat question too. That's an old question on the kill stream. And I will ask that you, you don't have to answer, but I'll, I'll ask that next and then I'll let you go. Um, okay. uh, Jake Paul is going to fight Mike Tyson in May on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, who do you got? Mike Tyson. I want it to be Tyson. I want him to just knock Jake Paul into next year. Um, I don't have any problem with Jake Paul. Well, I don't hate I don't him, but I just want to see Iron yeah. Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I don't follow. Out. I don't follow sports ball or anything like that. Although boxing is is better than like fucking basketball or something like that. But if you watch his training video, Mike Tyson seems to have the same agility that the average twenty five year old would have. And I don't know because the, the, here's here's the thing. And I'm not an expert in boxing, but here's my quick take. If Jake Paul puts out Tyson Master 33 quickly. Said one on Rumble. Uh, what about my offer to well, stick to Actually, if, if, if Tyson uh, puts out Jake Paul quickly, like in the first couple of rounds, uh, that'll be it. Otherwise, Mike Tyson, because he is older, he will eventually tire. His agility will fall. And his ability to weave around and defend himself will fall. But the problem is that if Jake Paul does the wrong thing, if he makes one wrong move, Mike Tyson's just going to slam him in the face and he's going to go down. Yeah, and I, and so I, it's basically it's a game of agility because Tyson has much less agility uh, over time, but he's also got much more agility right up front. So he's got to he's got to put it away very quickly. Yeah, and I agree. The longer it goes, because Tyson's older, um, the the worse it's going to be uh, because of stamina, yeah. et cetera. Um, if if it ends in, if it ends in the first two or maybe three rounds, then Mike Tyson's got it made. He he will win. If it uh, ends after that, then it'll be Jake Paul. Also, I'm but I really, I really, I really want Mike Tyson to win, though, because I just want like one more really great knockout from him. Because I've, I actually, when I saw that news, I was like, oh, holy shit! And uh, because you know, even even if you don't really like boxing, Mike Tyson is still legend. He's one of the most legendary athletes of all fucking human history. And so I was looking at it, and I was watching him ducking and weaving around the punches like it was literally nothing. Nothing could land. The thing is, he can't do that as long as he used to be able to do so. So he's got to keep that in mind. I'm going to be Although, watching. Although when, when he took the fucking medicine ball and he's pounding it on the floor and screaming. Saw that. And stuff. 
Yeah, yeah I would not want to be facing him. And and I, I will say uh, they have the hype. I mean, I think it's going to be a huge uh, number of people watching this fight. The, uh, the amount of money that they're going to make off this match is phantasmagorical. I agree. Uh, I think it's like they'll have enough money to buy a fucking island, and hopefully it's not Epstein Island. <laughs> I think it's going to be the biggest crossover, quote unquote, boxing match that we've seen so far, uh, simply yeah. because it includes Mike Tyson. Uh, there was a question earlier. I'll read it. You can pass on if you want. Sticks or was yeah. a proposition? Sticks. I'll give you a hundred signed pictures of Penn Jillette and a lightly used Ron Paul twenty. 2008 yard sign if you finally name them is what he said you don't have to you don't have the to. jews yeah. <laughs> now please give me my pen Gillette. you oh. owe me you know you owe me a great deal of pen Gillette, <laughs> as well as the ron paul uh well yard sign. i mean he, he kind of did there i have to say uh now let me this is the this contact one. dm me on twitter with, the, with this i'll give you my shipping details <laughs> <laughs> i didn't expect it Okay, uh, now one last question. This is an old Killstream question. I don't really ask it anymore unless somebody super chats it in. And it no. was started by a super chatter. Uh, and hold on, there's a, another super chat coming in. Master 33 cents. They said they're in the mail, the sir. Is what they're in the mail, said. sir. Uh, okay, <laughs> now uh, this is an old question, and it started from a super chatter. And uh, I guess it's kind of a litmus test. I don't know. It's just a really. You can take the question however you want, right? And I've had all kinds of different answers on this and justifications for it. It's just a wild question that somehow became part of the Killstream lore. I don't know if you've been asked this on the Killstream or not, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. It says, I don't know if it's been asked before. I don't either. I can't remember if Styx has been asked before. But who would you rather meet, Styx, Hitler or Prince, the singer? Now, of course, both are dead. Uh, but if there was some way to meet one or the other, uh, who would you rather meet? Well, if they're both dead, it doesn't matter because they're both skeletons. Um, uh, I'd say Hitler because uh, I don't like Prince's personality. <laughs> Sticks live on the kill stream, sir. Tell them where they can find you. You can find me at Stick666Official over on Twitter or StickSexNamer666 or six, 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 cross-platform. And uh, various links uh, in the description of every video that I make. You can find me all over the place. Very cool, and I enjoy talking to you. And hopefully, we can have you on later <laughs> in the election season. Absolutely, because it's going to be a yeah, very that was interesting fun. year. Yes, it was fun, and I I'll, I'll it. make sure to put my military on again. <laughs> That's right. Put your military tire on. Uh, be safe out there and have fun. I know you're working just as hard as I am. So enjoy, uh, enjoy it until we speak again, sir. All right. Take care. Uh huh. Take care. Sticks here, Bye. live on the kill stream. Thank you, sir. Peace out. There we go. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.